Hey guys, David here, and today another awesome hack to improve video stabilization with your Sony ZV-1. If I told you the footage you're watching right now is with all stabilization turned off and no gimbal, would you believe me? Well, it is true. And today I'm going to tell you about Catalyst Browse, the free software that stabilized that video, how to use it, tips on getting the best results, and a comparison with a dedicated gimbal to help you work out what the right solution is for you. Catalyst Browse is a free software that uses gyroscopic data recorded in more recent Sony cameras like the ZV-1, A7S 3 and A7C for software stabilization. Gyro data records the camera's orientation and position in space and enables the software to use this precise info for really accurate stabilization. To do this, Catalyst crops into the image just like the built-in active steady shot stabilization. But unlike the built-in steady shot, with Catalyst you can control the level of cropping in post-production to find your preferred balance between stabilization, field of view, cropping, and all while benefiting from that extra precision of gyroscopic stabilization. Next, a quick how-to guide. First, download and install the Catalyst Browse software from Sony's website. Next, open it up and navigate to where the clips you wanna work on are saved. You'll see the clips here have a little shaking camera icon in the top right of their thumbnail. That means gyroscopic data has been recorded and we can use Catalyst stabilization. The ZV-1 records gyro data with every frame rate in 4K and up to 60 frames per second in 1080p. 120 frames per second and the high frame rate super slow-mo modes don't record gyro data. So you can use slow motion and Catalyst stabilization together, but only up to 60 frames per second. Side note, if you're interested in the ultra slow-mo high frame rate mode of the ZV-1, which is really cool, I made a tutorial, which I will link above and in the description. Back in Catalyst, we select the clip we want to work on, then select the Stabilize button in the lower right part of the screen. Catalyst then analyzes the gyroscopic data and applies its suggested crop for optimal stabilization. I usually find this a pretty good start. You can see here with the original clip on the left and the automatic Catalyst stabilized one on the right. But if you want more control, click the manual button and you can slide the crop ratio back and forth until you find a balance between field of view and stabilization that you like. Once you're happy with your results, go to the share icon in the upper right. You can select the folder where you'd like to save your stabilized clip as well as options around things like frame rate, codec, and color space. I recommend keeping these two same as source unless you deliberately want to change something. I also suggest you choose optimize image quality for the encode setting, and for the render preset, you choose the same codec that you recorded with to maximize quality. Experiment as you like, but it really is that simple. Now I'm gonna show you a bunch more test footage of what Catalyst can do and two key tips on how to get the most out of it. In every situation I've tested, Catalyst gives good to excellent stabilization, but with two potential costs. So let me illustrate that and talk about how to keep those benefits and mitigate the potential drawbacks. Here we're shooting in 4K, 24 frames per second and 1 over 50 shutter for the traditional movie-like motion blur. You see the original unstabilized clip at the top, in the bottom left a final cut stabilized comparator, and then in the bottom right we have the Catalyst stabilized results. If we go full screen on the Catalyst results, we can see some strange artifacts. Most noticeably a weird blur on the face and the background whenever I take a heavier step or a more shaky movement. This is because at lower shutter speeds like 1 over 50, some amount of motion blur gets baked into the frames. When Catalyst tries to stabilize those frames, we get these weird results. This may or may not be an issue for you depending on the speed of your movement and the amount of motion in your shot, but I want to explain how to get better results. So tip number one, shoot with a high shutter speed. Here we have the same comparison, 4K, 24 frames a second, but now one over 1000 shutter speed. No more motion blur artifacts, just good quality stabilization. Here is more at one over 500, which looks good to me with no noticeable artifacts. And more again at one over 250, which again, I think looks good. I might spot one little artifact, see if you see it as well. I don't have a hard and fast rule for this tip, apart from trying to shoot at a relatively high shutter. You'll need to consider the best balance between getting enough light into the camera, the amount of motion of the camera and of the subject that you're shooting to find the sweet spot for you. What you wanna do is try and eliminate significant motion blur to get the best out of Catalyst. That footage showed the quality of stabilization Catalyst can provide infinitely better than unstabilized and in my opinion, way better than Final Cut plus more consistent. 
Check out the corners of the Final Cut stuff especially to see some of the problems with that. But the price of those results is a sometimes significant crop into the image. On average, Catalyst was cropping in 80 to 85% with those walking, vlogging examples, which can lead to a somewhat tight angle. So tip two is to try and widen your field of view to mitigate the crop that will happen in post when you apply Catalyst. For this, I recommend an inexpensive wide angle lens or some form of grip extension, a selfie stick, a tripod or similar. I made a video reviewing and showing you how to install a wide angle lens, which I'll link above and in the description. I also made a video comparing lots of different stabilization methods, which cover the grip extension and a comparison with other approaches, which I'll also link above and in the description if those are of any use. I also recommend shooting in 4K if you can for shakier shots. This just gives you much more resolution which can help mitigate the impact of more significant cropping. So now some test footage at 24 frames per second 4K 1 over 1000 shutter plus our wide angle lens. Catalyst continues to stabilize really nicely but now even after that cropping we retain a nice wide view which is ideal for vlogging. The Catalyst stabilized examples on the right here at 1 over 500 and 1 over 250 shutter seem to have really good stabilization, a nice wide field of view and no artifacts. All in all, good results to me. But are these Catalyst results good enough to compete with or even replace a dedicated gimbal? Here's some gimbal footage at 24 frames per second, 1 over 50 shutter with no wide angle lens. To me, the stabilization looks great, and while it's subtle at this slower pace, it's nice to retain that movie-like motion blur from the 1 over 50 shutter speed. Here is the same gimbal setup plus wide-angle lens for an even wider field of view. Again, I think it looks great. I made a guide on how to set up the ZV-1 with this Xeon Crane M2 gimbal, plus more test footage showing some of the gimbal's capabilities. I'll link that above and in the description in case helpful. So both Catalyst and the gimbal give really good stabilization results. Let me know in the comments if you think one is clearly superior to the other. Before I run through the respective advantages and drawbacks of Catalyst compared with the gimbal and at the end give my conclusions on which I think is best, thanks for watching so far. If you like ZV-1 content, there's a bunch on the channel and more planned, plus creative and tech stuff you may well enjoy, so please consider subscribing. If you find this video helpful or interesting, then a like or share would be amazing. And of course, please ask me any questions you have in the comments. Thank you. So, advantages of Catalyst over a gimbal. One, Catalyst is completely free, whereas a gimbal like the Zoom Crane M2 is around 200 pounds or dollars. It's a pretty significant saving. Two, Catalyst is really easy to use. You saw from the demo just how simple it is. With a gimbal, once you've got the hang of balancing, it's not too bad, but there's definitely more of a learning curve. Plus you need to fiddle around every time you set it up. Even more so if you wanna use that gimbal with multiple cameras, with different accessories that change the weight and the balance of your rig, or with the ZV-1, every time you wanna change a battery or an SD card, you have to remove it from the gimbal, add it back, maybe tweak the balance sometimes. All of these things go away with Catalyst, and that's quite nice. Three is portability. Zoom Crane M2, as you can see, very light, compact, but no gimbal is always going to be easier, simpler, and lighter, so that's a win for Catalyst. But what advantages does our gimbal have over Catalyst? One, it removes any constraints around shutter speed that you have to worry about with Catalyst. So if you want a particular level for motion blur, light management, light flicker, all of those things can be done without you having to worry about stabilization or post-production impacts. Two, the gimbal saves you a step in your post-production workflow since you don't need to run Catalyst. In my testing, I found that Catalyst took a little time to render clips. On average, three seconds of render time for every one second of clip duration. So for example, if you had a 15 minute clip, that's 45 minutes of render time. An hour clip, three hours of render time. That's on a top of the line eight core 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. If your machine is less powerful, the time could go up even more if you're using Catalyst and that could be a big addition to your workflow. Three, with a gimbal, you know exactly how your footage is gonna look and you can check it in camera straight away. You don't have to be uncertain about the results or worry about cropping or artifacts that you might have to do if you're relying on Catalyst in post-production. What about creative shooting? I think both Catalyst and a gimbal offer slightly different, complementary, unique shooting opportunities. 
Here is some handheld B-roll stabilized with Catalyst, which I think looks great, really nice and smooth. Filming handheld, you can get much more kind of nuance, flexibility and twists and movements of the camera that you just couldn't achieve with a gimbal. By contrast, unique features of the Xeon, like Go Mode, which can stabilize running at a full sprint, or Vertigo Mode for that Inception vibe, just couldn't be replicated handheld. So I think for creative shooting, both Catalyst and the gimbal have unique and complementary use cases. Which brings us to the conclusions. Overall, I think Catalyst is an excellent tool that can provide really impressive results, provided you can manage the crop and the shutter speed elements. I love how Catalyst allows you to shoot handheld with the ZV-1 in any situation and get gimbal-like results, especially because the camera genuinely is small enough to fit in your pocket and go anywhere with you. Plus, it's free, it works up to 60 frames per second, so you can even use some slow motion with it. It takes up no space, it takes up no time to set up before you're shooting, these things are great and make it a really useful option. But for me, the gimbal is still superior. You get excellent stabilization without any compromise on shutter, shot composition, or workflow. You get immediate certainty of your results. You don't have to worry about the question, how will my footage look after catalyst stabilization? Plus you get a grip extension just by holding the gimbal out and you get unique additional shooting modes. These benefits justify the price, the extra physical space, and the hassle of balancing the gimbal for my use case. I will be using Catalyst as a complementary tool though, especially for ad hoc shooting situations, and it's amazing to have that extra flexibility. If your situation means that budget or physical space are significant constraints, but things like shutter speed, crop factor, and render time aren't, then Catalyst could well be a very good option for your main stabilization method. If you have the budget and don't mind the learning curve of getting to grips with two things, then my approach of using the gimbal for most situations and filling in the gaps with Catalyst, I think is the absolute best option. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And that is it for today. A massive thank you for watching, especially for making it all the way to the end. If the video has been helpful or interesting, then please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, all these things would be a massive help and hugely appreciated. So, until next time, take it easy.